As a safety, maintenance, or operations manager, an overhead crane inspection needs to be a priority for you to stay in compliance with inspection standards laid out by the sanctioning bodies like OSHA, ASME, ANSI, and CMAA. Being as busy as you are, understanding how often your cranes need to be inspected can be confusing. Not to mention the difficulties in trying to figure out how much these inspections will add to your budget. There are many factors that can affect the cost of an overhead crane and hoist inspection. In this video, we'll help you understand what influences the price and give you some numbers so you know what you can expect when the time comes to get your cranes inspected. My name is Ben, and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today we sit down with Bobby Hamilton, Regional Service Manager, so he can help us find out how much a crane inspection costs, how often it should be done, and what you can expect from and during an inspection. Hopefully in this video we answer all of your questions, but if we don't, just drop them down in the comments and we'll get you an answer. Thanks for being here, Bobby. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Glad to be here. So the first thing I want to know is, how often should you get your cranes inspected? Well, there are five types of inspections that are required. There are initial, frequent, periodic, cranes not in regular use, and functional. The functionals be performed by the operator daily. The intervals are going to be dependent on the critical condition of the components, uh, the wear of the components, the environment. Our experts can help determine the interval based on the duty cycle and the OEM requirements as well. So, is it a good idea to have your crane inspected by a third party rather than do it in-house? Yeah, there's absolutely value in going with a third party inspection company. Um, our inspectors bring uh, thousands of hours of, of working on the cranes. Um, they've been trained in the, in the standards and regulations, so they know cranes. And being the crane experts, uh, they're, they're able to provide uh, very thorough documentation, uh, component wear, monitoring the condition of the crane, and you just can't get that in-house. So what does Mozilla bring to the table as a third-party inspector compared to maybe somebody else who's doing it? Yeah, we do truly have the best inspectors in the business. And not only that, but the Mozilla company has the, the resources to be able to come up with long-term solutions for issues that a customer may have on a crane. So we're, you know, we're able to have a true partnership uh, to be able to come up with those solutions so that they, make, number one, make their cranes safe, and number two, their cranes are reliable. Okay, so you said that Mozilla has the best inspectors in the business. So my question is, is what makes Mozilla inspectors qualified to perform these inspections? Well, the, uh, the inspectors have to have th literally thousands of hours of, of repair time on, you know, before they're even considered to be an inspector. So, you know, they have the, uh, the experience of working on the equipment and then they go through training uh, to be, in, you know, inspection qualified. So whenever our inspectors come out on your cranes, you're not just getting an inspector to check the boxes. You're getting someone that understands the, the mechanical, the electrical functions on the crane uh, and, and they're, they're going to be able to uh, perform at a higher level uh, than, you know, than someone who doesn't have the opportunity to work on the equipment in the field. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the inspections themselves. So what can the company expect from and during the inspection? And then how can they prepare for the inspection? Well, the, first of all, the number one thing they can do to prepare is to quite literally allow, you know, clear free access to the crane. You know, we need to, if there's a product in, that's underneath the crane or in the, in the path of a, you know, man lift if it's needed, we need to make sure that we have clear access. Um, the next thing is we need to take into consideration the, the production uh, schedule of the facility. Uh, our inspectors literally look at hundreds of components and it's best that they do this uninterrupted. So we need to consider the, the production needs of the crane uh, as well. Um, and then our, the inspector is going to ask you know, if there's any issues or problems, we want to know any, any kind of pre-existing conditions so that we can make sure to focus on those while we're performing the inspections. So other than that, um, we'll come in, we'll get set up, uh, make sure we're set up to safely do the job. We're, we're, 
uh, following all the, uh, the safety rules that uh, the customer has in addition to what Mozilla has. And, uh, you know, we'll go to work and do it. So do they need to provide a scissor lift? Do you need special training to enter the facility, anything like that? So a lot of our customers do require specific on-site training and you know, whenever we're in the, uh, in the planning stage, we would want to you know, certainly know that so that we can do that ahead of time. We do have lifts. Um, if the customer has, one, uh, has a lift and you know, we're certainly uh, okay to, if they provide it, we'll certainly use their equipment. We just have to have the, the communication up front to, to, to come up with a plan uh, to, you know, to how we're going to execute the, uh, the inspection. Okay, so let's say you're going into a shop or a mill or a factory. Does everything need to be shut down? Does production need to stop while you're doing the inspection? No, it does not. Um, so if you have a, a single crane that services a particular line in, in, a, in a bay, that, that particular uh, line is definitely going to be impacted because you know we, we could spend hours inspecting the crane. But the rest of the facility can certainly keep running. And if there's multiple cranes on the same runway, and, you, and we're able to take one of the cranes out for inspection, the other crane can certainly keep running to keep the production uh, up. Uh, we just have to take the precautions to make sure that the inspector is protected from the crane that's still operating on that runway. So how long is the crane going to be down for the inspection? Well, there's a lot of different variables in that, but it, it depends on uh, the, the complexity of the crane. Um, you know, a top, uh, top running double girder crane, um, you know, a 50 or 60 ton critical process crane is, is certainly going to take longer than it would to do a, you know, a single girder under running crane. So there's a lot of different, you know, factors and variables. But again, it really comes down to the, uh, to the, the number of components that we're going to be looking at. Once you perform the inspection, what can the, what can the customer expect after the inspection? So both right immediately after and then kind of long term. Yeah, so if our inspectors find any critical safety issues or OSHA violations or even a reliability critical issue, the inspector will immediately make contact with the customer to let them know what those issues are before returning the crane back to service. We want to make sure we communicate that. And then we can come up with a plan to, to make the repairs, make the adjustment, or whatever it is we have to do to get the crane back to where it can run safely and reliably. After that, the, uh, the customer is going to receive um, an inspection report that they'll be able to review and keep on file and anything that's in there, uh, recommended repairs, uh, failures, we will quote those for repair if the customer would like to proceed with getting those repaired. Okay, so let's say there's nothing wrong with the crane. What Does that change anything? No, it doesn't change anything. You're still gonna get a report. Um, if, if you're ever audited by OSHA, you'll have that on file. You'll be able to present that to them to show that you know, you're in compliance. We do keep the records on file, so if something ever happened, the customer uh, needed a, a, a copy of the inspection report, we, were, we are fully capable of, of providing them with those reports. So let's get into the reason why everyone clicked on this video. So what affects the cost of the crane inspection? Well, there's a lot of variables that go into that. So you know, again, it's going to come down to the accessibility of the crane, the uh, complexity of the crane, the number of components that we're going to look at. Uh, it, is the inspection scheduled during a weekday or is it best to do it on the weekend when the production is down? So there, there's a lot of different variables. Uh, our experts can certainly come up with a plan to, uh, to set up a, a program to inspect it so that it, um, it's cost efficient for the customer um, and, and it minimizes the impact on the productivity. Okay, so bottom line, how much does it cost? Well, I'm going to say that on, on average, on a, an average working day, you can expect to pay anywhere from $960 to $1,200. And it's going to depend on the number of cranes, uh, again, the, the number of components that we look at, the, the accessibility. But my, my thing is, is how much is it going to cost to not perform an OSHA required inspection? You know, if, we, if the customer doesn't do it, they're opening themselves up for costly OSHA citations because of non-compliance. And then the biggest thing is, what does it cost the customer if there's an incident then someone's injured with an overhead crane? So let's say somebody's doing their research, they're looking around and they see a quote that's way lower than everybody else or even free. They're gonna be pretty tempted to go with the cheaper quote. So why is that maybe not such a great idea? 
First of all, if you get an offer for a free quote, I would question the reputation and the capabilities of that company, that inspector. And I would also question the quality of the inspections that you're going to receive. Uh, it, you know, from the experience that I have with, uh, with companies that operate like that, they do expect something in return. So you're not, you may not get those real true accurate condition reports. You may not get an accurate um, report on what the, the crane condition is because quite honestly, they're, they're looking to get those repairs. They're looking to get that spinoff work, which is why they're offering them at a such a low rate. Uh, but the biggest thing to me is if, if they're doing them at such a low cost is, is the quality, the experience of the inspector performing the work. You know, how many years of, of, of service have they performed, you know, repairing cranes? What, what's their, their training record like? You know, what, what, what credentials do they have to be able to, to look at a critical condition on a hoist? Uh, in, you know, in your facility? Those would be some of the questions that I would ask um, if, if it was an incredibly low price or even free. Okay. If you think we missed something, you can drop a comment down below and Bobby and I will do our best to give you an answer. Appreciate you watching. Bobby, appreciate you being uh, here. You're welcome. Yeah. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. My name is Ben. I'll see you in the next one.